So, hi everyone. I'm Hemant Purohit. I'm a researcher at Ohio Center of Excellence in Knowledge Enable Computing at Rice State University, um, Ohio, USA. I want to talk to you about how we can really leverage the social media communities uh, to assess the response coordination. It's part of a multidisciplinary project between computer and social scientists as a focus uh, for our project and supported by US National Science Foundation. So let's really look at the scale of this disaster citizen sensing. What's the scale we are talking about? Anyone remembers the number of tweets after Hurricane Sandy last year? Or uh, last summer's Oklahoma tornado? Well, 20 million. So out of those 20 million such massive data flow, there were interesting messages of this kind where intention or the behavior of request and offer to uh, help are existing. But can we really, can responders really hear and engage them? If they don't, then there's a problem. Like as NPR reported after Hurricane Sandy, there are piles and piles of clothes which were lying there for responders to manage while the required supplies were not in place. So to fix this, can we have a way in technology to really leverage it. So we need to focus on three critical functions here. One, we need to identify demand and supply. Second, we need to match those intentions. And third, we need to engage with the right set of actors, demand and supply and influencers. Well, first two, like identifying and matching demand and supply is really like your Google search, where you have a demand for food as your query and results as supplies of your food. Now, but just a keyword search cannot work here because of intentions involved. Also, for a computational system, we will have furthermore challenges like we don't express our thoughts very carefully, like carefully in the sense like we don't express it very obviously. There is ambiguity, it's like in this message. Then our matching of intentions, if we try to do, then uh, they are context sensitive, like if I'm looking for volunteering, or in this example, like collection drive, it need to be geo-bound or time-bound, sometimes medium-bound too. Third, when we are verifying information for demand or supply, we need to have high trust as well. So can I trust this collection drive message really? Should I trust it? Right? Having all these challenges in mind, then we went on understanding the linguistic behavior in those communities, and then went on to design machine learning techniques for this purpose. And I want to exemplify those steps using the Oklahoma tornado analysis that we were doing. In the bottom, you will see really less number of offers, right? but important ones. So first, we identify the demand and the types of them. So you see first message about like volunteering, second message about donation purpose requirements, right? Um, so having those demands of several kinds, then you have supplies of several kinds. So people want to offer to volunteer. People want to offer to donate, right? And then there are also specific messages pointing about specific location of uh, uh, resources, such as food and water. Now, in this, context is very important, like we were talking about earlier. In the first two messages, are those volunteering messages where help is being needed in Shawnee and person who wants to volunteer around Moore, are they really in the near region? Are they really timely? If so, let's match them. Second, uh, in the bottom two messages, which is about donating, right? It's not really context sensitive as much as those first two. So you can directly go and match them uh, because they're just about way of donating. But you know, sometimes, this machine intelligence is not always good enough, so automation is not enough. In that case, can we leverage human intelligence? Because we have missing information. As you all know, geolocation is very sparse right, in the data. Also, there is authenticity issues, verification issues, right? so we can bring humans in the loop. Sec now, we were also understanding this last function, how to engage really. So in this interface, on the right side, you see the influencer's network reach. On the left, it's type. In the bottom, you see it's profile to really engage. In the second interface that we're researching is about by location and time, can I summarize demand and supplies? And if I can just go to click on the summary, I can get context in the bottom, whatever the tweets, messages were about, what were the news, media, blogs, everything about. So in conclusion, what we learn is that there is a way to leverage social media uh, and there's a technology, but we need to focus on function. And here it was demand and supply centric. What we need is smart 
actionable filtering of the data, not the big data, right? And that's what matters because that connects real people to real world, uh, time in real time. So I want to acknowledge NSF SOX, my advisors, my mentors, two of which are also here, Patrick and Chato. Uh, and thanks very much. You can contact me for more details for this. Thank you very much.